So I'll start and I'll make actually just a quick introduction to two things, the Sysmo Octim and Atmel Start. And yes, Atmel is not dead by far. So uh, how this started? Harald already presented uh, Osmo RAMSIM and the idea of Osmo RAMSIM is to connect lots of SIM cards to lots of modems. Now you have you need somehow to, con to have lots of SIM cards. And there are not a lot of devices which actually support lots of SIM cards. They are SIM boxes, but they are very expensive. They are not easy to find, and they are always having a proprietary protocol, so it's not very convenient. So if you have 32 SIM cards or so on. Particularly because there is a USB standard called USB CCID which supports which actually defines how to talk to smart cards or SIM cards. And using just one USB device, you can have up to uh, 128 smart cards. So why not use this one? Uh, so we looked around, or actually Harold looked around to find if there are such devices with 128 SIM cards using the USB CCID profile, and there is none. The most we could find is actually this device, which has five card slots. So these are actually behind a cover, you have three here, then you have one here and one on the side. And that's the most we could find with using the USB CCID profile. And even this one isn't very good because if you look at the CCID profile, it tells you a lot about what the capabilities. For example, so here the interface class tells you it's CCID, but afterwards it tells you which voltages to support, only five volts, although you can have 1.8 volt, 3 volts, the protocol, the clock, you can have lots of clocks up to 20 megahertz, so from 4 to 20 megahertz, this only supports 4 megahertz. And then the baud rate, the maximum baud rate is 300 bits per second. With SIM cards, you can go up to 3.4 megabits per second. And the last thing which isn't ideal is here this max busy slot is one. So this means that you can only talk to one SIM card at a time. And actually it is multiplexing the interfaces. You cannot talk to several uh, at a time. So if you want now to have 128, you always have to multiplex between all of them. So because we didn't find anything which is capable of reading a lot of SIM cards, they decided, or Sysmocom decided to build a device which is called the Sysmo OctSIM, and the OCT in OctSIM stands for eight card slots, and that's the idea. So it's a USB device which implements the CCID protocol, so everything which, like PCSC tool, which is able to, to read smart cards can use this device. It has eight card slots. They are not multiplex, so you can talk to all of them at the same time uh, to support all the voltages. You can have high bit rates. We didn't test up to very high bit rates, but should be capable. And most importantly, it must be stackable. So if you want more than just eight uh, card slots, you can stack the Sysmo OctSIM, and then you can have even more, even uh, just over this one USB CCID maybe. This is not implemented yet, but these were the ideas and these were the requirements for the Sysmo OctSIM. Now, we need to find some kind of microcontroller which is able to, hand, uh, to have uh, eight SIM card slots without multiplexing, so eight SIM card devices. And you talk with two smart cards using the ISO 7816 protocol, and this is very, very similar to UART. So what you do in the beginning, whenever you design a product, you go through all the... Um, manufacturers of microcontroller, you go through the product finder, the parametric search, and you start searching who has eight UART. So here, the idea was to click USB device, and as soon as you click USB device on the STM, on the ST micro uh, controller website, you only see that the most they could support is four UART. So already there, there is no STM microcontroller supporting eight UART with USB. Same for NXP, actually it supports, you can see eight or nine UART, but only two of them support the ISO protocol, um, even on the high, high end ones. So, no NXP. And then we landed on Microchip, Microchip, which already uh, still bought Atmel. And there we found one. Um, there's actually several of them. And this is still an Atmel because you see AT in the beginning. So, Microchip bought Atmel. But they're still selling the Atmel microcontrollers and it's I think they will keep the brand for a long time and not and keep the separation between the picks from microchip and the Atmel. So whenever you see Atmel in the beginning, it is 
microchip, but using the brand of Atmel and even the new ones. So the microcontrollers you see here are actually new. They are not produced by the X Atmel, which has been bought by microcontroller, but really microcontroller designed them. And then the SAM series is just that they are um, Cortex microcontrollers. And so we decided to pick this one because this is the only one which is able to speak with eight SIM cards at the time. You could also have FPGAs, but we don't want to design our own core. We want to take a microcontroller which is capable of, of doing it with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the other solution, if you really want to have a, a lot more SIM cards, would really be to have FPGAs and design your own core, but that's not the part we took. So this is the OctSIM, and this is how it looks like. So you can see, so this is the microcontroller we use. It's a SAM E54 with eight slots. You can see four on top, which is the daughter board, and then if you look on the side, you can also see the other ones. So the idea is to have plug and play, so you can insert and inject them all the time with all the requirements. So here you have USB, you can have a USB over here. Here you have a canvas where you could, act no, this one. This is the canvas where you can actually stack the devices, and here the footprint, which is not there, is an Ethernet bus if you want to connect it over Ethernet. But for, for now, this is just uh, not a prototype because it, it is working, but the software is not there. We can connect over USB and talk to the SIM card, but it's not USB CC ID ready. Uh, the device is not being sold yet. Uh, you, so you say they're stackable, and so they appear as, a, as one single USB device with more slots? That, that would be the idea, okay. uh, but that's not implemented now. Okay. But that, 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 that's, that, the that, 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 that's the goal, yeah. So you use the CAN bus with two megabits to talk to all, all, all the other one, and then you have one USB bus. Of uh, yeah, we are recording, so you can here, use this mic. So you said um, that you wanted to use high speed, I think, or is it is it high speed or full speed this controller? It's full speed. Yeah, it's ah, only okay. full speed. Okay, question answered. Yeah. So this, this device doesn't work, so you cannot play with it yet. But if you still want to, to play with the Atmel, I can recommend this development board by Atmel. Uh, it's quite packed, so it has the same chip, and I, we started developing on it. Uh, there's a typo in their documentation, but it's the SAM E4054, uh, which supports Ethernet. That's why there is an E instead of the D. And yeah, it has everything you need. The chip here, it has a quad FPI flash, uh, it has Ethernet, it has the CAN interface, it has USB, it has micro SD slot, lots of IOs. Um, and the two neat things that there are is it has an embedded debugger, embedded flasher. This is the USB debug you see here. And also you can do power measurements, real low power measurements, because it has a second microcontroller which is just there to actually let you measure how much power it consumes. And for 70 euros, I think it's a pretty good development board, and it's almost the only development board which supports these chips. So we started with this one, and the problem with this is that uh, before, when you wanted to develop with Atmel, you could use the Atmel Studio 7, which uses the ASF3 library, which supports all the microcontroller and provided you with a high abstraction layer for the for the microcontroller uh, with all the code needed. The problem is that with this new series by Microchip, this microcontroller is, no is not supported by Atmel Studio, and actually all the new ones are not supported anymore by Atmel Studio. That's a shame. Instead, what they decided to do is create a new IDE, which is called Atmel Start, with a new library, which is the ASF4, which is a rewrite, complete rewrite of the ASF3, but the ASF4 is only available on the Atmel Start website IDE. It's not available on the Atmel, um, Atmel Studio anymore. And the idea of this talk somehow is just to tell you how the new microcontroller works and how Atmel Start works, so you don't waste time understanding how uh, how it works because this is the only on, the only alternative there is to develop on these microcontrollers. Yeah, yeah, if you don't want to do everything there, I'll, I'll show you a bit of alternative afterwards, but the idea, if you want to use a, a, a library which is supported, this is the only solution you have. So, here, this is how the website is. So there is no online, uh, offline ID anymore. Everything is online. Um, you can, for example, here we will have 
and you can see it's pretty slow. Here we can uh, start with looking at the examples, and they have a lot of example codes, which is actually not bad. And uh, I have to say that the code is okay. There's still a lot of smart card, sorry. The, the code is okay. Uh, there are still a lot of bugs because it's a, a bit new, but the, th the, the support is not bad. And here you can already set which board you want to, to, to put on it for this um, example code. Then it loads everything like in IDE, but everything is web-based. And this will have some, some other problems. First, you see it's, it's damn slow, and this is almost the fastest part. Um, so this is how, once it finished loading, routing, everything, this is how it looks like. So you have the dashboard, which allows you to add the peripherals. So for example, here we only have one smart card, which uses uh, the, this driver, the user driver. But if you want, you can add a lot of other drivers. So you have even middlewares, you can add the DAC, the CAN, and so on. So this is how you add your, your components. And once you add them, you can configure the basic things, uh, the basic things on, on this page. The other part which is quite important on this new microcontrollers is the clocking system. They have a huge number of clocks and every device can take a clock from uh, almost anywhere. So on the left side you have the clock sources, or the clock oscillators, which are actually creating the clocks. Uh, and you can already see you have six clock oscillators just for one microcontroller. And once you selected them, you feed them in what they call generic clock generator, and this allows you to subdivide or to create other references. For example, you only want uh, you only cr you are creating a hundred megahertz clock for the mic for the uh, core, but not all the peripherals can be run at hundred megahertz. So you have to provide the divide the other clocks here. This is what you see here. The main device is running at 12 megahertz, and now the smart card com, which is the USART, is running at 3 megahertz. And it also has a, another clock. Um, so you, you, you do this here. So one of the problems also is that they are trying to be intelligent somehow. And for example, if I use this digital phased loop, and I say I want to use a source for the PLL, the oscillator, it will tell me that this is not possible because right, da, 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 close uh, here clock reference oscillator close here there is this this warning sign it will tell you that it, you cannot use this clock because it is above 2 megahertz and the maximum clock you can use for this PLL is 2 megahertz now you do have a setting for the clock divider here so if you use 2 it uh, which is power of two, it, it's slow enough. The problem is that the IDE doesn't know this clock divider, doesn't interpret it. And not only that, because there is this warning, you cannot export your project. So you cannot have the code which is working theoretically out of this IDE and compile it yourself. So a lot of things is you have to uh, do whatever works and then change locally. And uh, you, you, it's rare that you have the sync between the configuration, which is on the website, and the actual code because of lots of these small mistakes because the start website is not complete yet. You can still file tickets, and I filed a ticket with that three months ago, four months ago. It's still not, not fixed. But this is one of them. So then you have also the pin mux, which uh, where you can select all the pins, what they do, which you see from almost new IDEs. And then here on the right, once it's loaded, you have uh, all the output. So this is nice for a start. So, yeah. What is the format of exported data? Is it? This is what I will show you now. <laughs> so and and finally, because it's an IDE, you don't have these tabs. You can here click on View Code, and yeah, you have to wait until you can view the code, because it's generating a preview. So the code is existing, but it's generating the preview. Uh, oh, yeah, the configuration is wrong, so I have to fix that. So even that's uh, here, disable this. Now you should be able to view the code. Yeah, and you see it's always this. You just click one thing, you have to wait 30 seconds for one thing, and then you, you start the preview. So I think the idea of Atmel Start is really just you have to use this website to start, but as soon as as you can, go out of it. So just just take uh, the base configuration and do everything yourself. And there you have the code, and it's 
it's not bad, badly done, the code which you don't know. So this is where you go to export project. And on the export project, you can see you can export the code for Atmel Studio. But Atmel Studio doesn't have the library itself. It's just that you can compile it on the Atmel Studio and all the other compilers which you have, even GCC. So you have a make file and we'll download it. So we again have to wait until it generates the code. And at some point, we will have downloaded it. CD download. Yeah, now it's finished. Unzip. So it's, a, it's called atzip or at something, but it's just a zip file with all the information which is in there. Uh, up. Smart card, yeah. Smart. And I mean, you don't know. AT zip, yeah. It's, it's just a zip file which contains the configuration and, and the code itself. Uh, smart. Uh. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, it's, uh, then you just go into GCC. And surprisingly, you just type make, and it works. So the make file is not badly done. I didn't try the other, the other compiling environments, but at least you can download the code, just type make, if you have the non ARM non-ARB compiler, and it works out of the box. And then you can, you can flash it using the embedded debugger from the, from the thing. So it, it's not bad, and the code is not bad. But you have to use the Atmel start to start. Another pain point. Uh, so this is admin start. Another pain point is that uh, you cannot download all the ASA4 libraries for all the components. Every time you add, uh, where is admin start? Every time you add on the dashboard a software, it will add the code for this library into your archive. But there is no way to, com to download the complete ASA4 library with all the peripherals. Um, Yes and no. <laughs> this is the, this is another point. The problem is that you don't really know which one is so. So you have, if you, the problem is you can only add if you have the peripheral for it on your chip, and then there are several different drivers for the peripheral. So you don't have on one chip enough peripheral that you can add all the codes, all the different drivers for all the combinations. Uh, you can yeah yeah you can automate. So there will. I'll, I'll talk about that later, but yeah, the idea is so. But just to tell that the idea is that you just add your code and you cannot download everything. The other problem, yeah, the other problem is then when you take your project back, you you want to add now a new peripheral because you're extending it. You have to download, you have to load your configuration file and then add the new driver. Ah, yeah, well, I'll, uh, did it? I'll show it here. It's cd uh, vim 8 atmel start dot 8. No, how is it called again? Um, there is an 80 start file somewhere in here. Uh, uh, vim atmel start dot 80 start. Ah, uh, yeah, atmel. Atmel start config. So this is actually w corresponding to what you are configured on the w on on the interface. It doesn't have to to match to your code actually, but this is what's on the interface. So what I do is I cheat very often. I I put something on here, but in the code it's a bit different. Uh, but this is what gets. So if you want to add a new peripheral, you have to load your Atmel start back on this interface again, add the peripheral, and then re-export it. The problem is that it's not always backwards compatible. So whenever you have your Atmel start, it first forces you to use the new libraries. So when you export, it exports with all the new libraries. So whatever you changed, or if you wanted to use something different, it's completely screwed. And also, it's not always backward compatible. So at one point, I wasn't able to load my configuration anymore. I had to create everything back again, or I had to cheat with the Atmel start because they, uh, they changed something. So don't expect, if, uh, if they do it right, well, don't expect that in three years, your same project will be able to be loaded on there without fixing by hand or without reading the manuals and so on. So pain point, but 
just just be warned. So uh, uh, about automating it, yes, somebody already automates. So there's a GitHub Adafruit ASF4, which actually just uploads the configuration, downloads the code. And this is exactly what I'm using to actually have version control on this ASF4 and do whatever it is, because they don't so they probably have version control on the back end, but you see nothing uh, out of it. The only thing you can see here, load it, please, is if you go to help and, yeah, help and support. No, here, version. Uh, here you see the version which you are using, and then you have a change log. But that's all they give you as information. So now I'm monitoring this page to see whenever there's a version change, and then I'm uploading to get all the code for at least my microcontrollers. I didn't automate it for all the microcontrollers, but at least for my microcontrollers, I can see, okay, this is the new library, they added this, 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 this is the other code. So this is one of the small tricks. Now, you can also get com bypass completely the ISF4 library, and if you're hardcore and Probably not a bad idea. Uh, just to take the data sheet, you have all the, it's quite well documented, you have all the registers, what they mean, and they actually provide you with uh, the CMSYS library. This is for the Cortex M family, you have the definitions for the core, and what they call the device family pack, which is actually the definition for all the registers for this microcontroller. This is what you see uh, again here. Uh, this is when you export project, this is what you see, the device pack information, this is what you see here. So you have to download these two things and then you have the definitions for all the peripherals. You don't have any functions and so on, but at least you have the definitions and then you do everything by, by hand yourself. This is maybe a bit more stable or an alternative um, to Atmel Start, but if you want to use the ISF4 library, you're forced to use Atmel Start, the, the web IDE. And uh, here, back here. Yeah, and oh, uh, other things also. Uh, this microcontroller doesn't come with a bootloader. There is no bootloader in the ROM. The only way, and there is no JTAG anymore. Uh, they only have serial wire debug with the two pins, and you have to flash it with this. So I recommend to buy one of these cheap $2 um, ST-Link V2, which has just SVD microcontrollers, because they also have an STM32F 103. So it's a cheap development board, even if you want to play with STM devices, and you can flash SVD as with, uh, as with, with that. Because there is no bootloader, which was previously Samba on all the previous Atmel chips, we decided to make uh, our own for the Sysmo Octsim. But it is you can generate for a lot of what is in ISF4, and this is the yeah, just go on on the Git from Osmocom, it's Osmo SF4 DFU, and this is a USB DFU bootloader, as we, as we do for almost all of the products, where you can flash your code using the standard DFU tool. And you can even lock the DFU bootloader in the microcontroller itself. But by default, there is no bootloader, which is a bit surprising. And now, yeah, now you're ready. You can completely develop on Atmel Start. You know how to use it. The documentation is not bad. Um, if you go on the Atmel Start website, you just have to wait forever always to, to get some information because it's a, a bit slow. And that's it. Any questions? <laughs> 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 yeah, why? I, I don't know why. <laughs> it's, really it's, like, it's like, oh, look at the ST, it has Cube MX for ST, for ST and it works, and you can download it. Let's, let's copy it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no comments. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, this this is probably not necessarily related to the development you're doing, but I'm interested in what's okay. going on with this um, idea of the web IDE, you know, and I'm also just no noticing that, you know, when you when you switch back to that tab, you have this delay. Um, why is it doing that? Like, is, is there... It's is JavaScript. It just takes, yeah, it, it just takes forever to run on a decent so machine. So there's processing going on... Uh, it's locally, yeah, yeah, most of the things are locally, except when you add um, when you add new drivers, it loads it on the back end. But most of the things are done locally. So the, all the code generation and that stuff is being done locally on no, no, no. no the code generation you still have to download from the website. 
Okay, so this, I'm, I'm also wondering, did you happen to read any terms and conditions or anything when you started using this? Or if I, what, what are they doing? Like, are, are they, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm wondering where this is going in the industry. Like, are they, they're obviously logging everything that you do and, and where, like, you know, this is this just I had this sort of concern from the privacy and I put my privacy kind of hat on and uh, uh, surveillance I, capitalism I, stuff <laughs> thinking like, why is a company wanting to know absolutely everything that you do or might want to do with their hardware? Um, or why would they why would they start doing this in the web? And rather than just allowing you to download an, an IDE and do it locally and do your own business on your own hardware. I have no idea. Maybe because <laughs> it's web and it's fancy. I didn't read the terms and conditions. You need to be logged in. Yeah, no, you don't need to be logged in. So you can do everything you uh, do. offline. And I don't, so I don't right. know if they really how much they log. I just read the terms and conditions for the code itself. So it just tells you you whatever you don't know, you are allowed to use it as much uh, as much as you want and distribute it as long as you use it for microchip devices. But who wants to use this this thing for other than microchip devices? Sure. Yeah. And then so there is the definitions for the, the CMCs and the Apache code, the STD library. So there are different licenses, but it is compatible with open source, so you can release it without problem. Then afterwards, what they do in the back end, how much they log, no idea. Um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, have too much conspiracy theory about it. I just thought they probably were thinking what is the easiest way for somebody to create or to, to build an example project. Um, and uh, I, I would assume that this is sort of the, the, the reason why. Because I mean, you don't need to install something. You don't, and then you have to worry about all the different operating systems and and variations and and things. And uh, so I think it's uh, really just uh, to to lower the entrance barrier to get some working code um, on on the devices. And the name Start also sort of implies. I mean, it's to get you started. It's not that this is going to be your uh, you know an IDE where you really do your development. It's just to generate some examples and some, some reference from which you then can do your actual development. But then they could still make the full library available, which is yeah. just, because I mean, that they have this tool to you know, help you get uh, LED blinking, fine, okay. But uh, it'd still be nice if you could, or even if the example project included the full ASF4 download, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I think, the usual problem with companies doing hardware is that they have absolutely zero clue about how to do proper software development. Um, and I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of any, I mean, please educate me if I'm wrong, I don't know of any microcontroller vendor that would, um, like, have their driver reference whatever code just in publicly available git repositories including the entire change history i think the only one who did that was xmos and they stopped doing it a couple of years ago there are a couple of chinese ones which are also doing it um, for example nuvoto everything is on their git and you can track all the different things so you're it's saying there perfect. is hope that <laughs> once chinese uh, microcontroller vendors become more prevalent that finally we will have proper revision control uh, that that would be sad for the Western companies, but I would say they deserve it if that's the uh, the course of events. I mean, uh, okay, maybe you don't have to work in control, but I mean, the ASF3, you can the CI libraries, you can download them, including the old version, like it's just the FTP. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here you cannot download your own version, so really, yeah, the exactly. only yeah, way. JSON project where you run it several times and it downloads basically every combination potential of driver and then they will publish it on GitHub because well, they are allowed to reduce the bridge, so they do it. So. Yeah, I do it only locally. I didn't publish anything because if, yeah, it's just easy and I don't want to mess around. But um, yeah, the if if you have if some driver is broken on on their thing, then it's and you are forced to use the new one. It's 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 good that you still have a backup. So that's why I'm also doing it. In the end, uh, we certainly didn't choose that microcontroller because of this Atmel start. Um, <laughs> and if no, um, and if necessary, we would have just, you know, done everything from scratch. Um, but uh, the, the, I think the controller itself is actually rather, or this family of new controllers is rather nice to work with. I also actually like the fact that it's ROMless and you don't have to 
work around some buggy ROM loader uh, that doesn't work reliable or whatever, so you can just have your own without having to have two bootloaders training, which is what we did in the past, that there is like the, 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 the Samba internal loader and then we have another bootloader for DFU and then we have our application, so we can just skip the initial state of some, some strange ROM loader that makes uh, assumptions about how you do your board that are not documented and so on. Um, and I said, yeah, the, the, I think the chip is rather nice to work with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and, and also, I think actually, sure, there are bugs. Kevin had struggled a bit with some USB stack bugs in the ASF4 code. But apart, and of course, there's lots of layers of abstraction. But actually, I think in terms of the APIs, it's rather nice to use. And uh, there's not always, but there's Doxygen uh, documentation in the source code. Um, so it's not too bad uh, in terms of the actual code that is generated. Mm, yeah, I agree. The microchip, the, the microcontroller is not bad. The library is not bad. It's just that there is this kind of IDE where, which you have to know and which you have to, to take on you if you want to start with this project. Well, thanks.